It's good to see you again in our e-learning class. I hope that all of you are physically and mentally strong to face the coronavirus outbreak that cannot be controlled up to the present time. The issues of pragmatics that we are going to talk about are the follow-up of those that we talked about in our previous learning class. The topics are speech act and felicity condition. We had better first of all try to consider the philosophy that underlies speech act as proposed by a British philosopher John Austin who lived in 1911 to 1960. According to him, the use of language or the use of patterns is not just a matter of whether the utterance is well constructed phonologically, morphologically, syntactically, and semantically. But there are some informations that can be conveyed by the use of the language. Yes, for instance, the effect of the use of language on the speaker's behavior and the listener's behavior. So this is why his theory is well known in a concept of your language can do action. Now let's go ahead. He proposed that there are three levels of speech acts, namely locutionary act, illocutionary act, and perlocutionary act. Let us try to talk about each one of them and see how closely they are related one to another. Locutionary acts occurs whenever a speaker single out an utterance or uses language. And of course it is understandable and it is semantically understandable and can convey information to the listener we can say that the communication has taken place and the speaker and the listener at the are now at the level of locutionary act. Now, the speech act conducted in locutionary act level should be continued to illocutionary act, namely the way or the intention of the speaker saying those utterances. The intentions of the speakers stating utterances may be warning, threaten, invitation, apologies, praise, and so on. How does the speaker put forward these intentions? How does the way he put forward this intention affect his behavior? This is locutionary, I'm sorry, this is a locutionary act. Now take a look at this. Of course, yes, the speech act in a locutionary level of threatening, promising, and welcoming, of course, is not the same. So there is something that affects the speaker's behavior. Then you see, in the level of using utterances, yes, in illocutionary forces, can be seen from different perspectives. For example, there are some utterances singled out by the speaker that can show action. Normally, the utterance is 
characterized by the use of performative verbs. Yes, let's see. I promise not to do it again. I promise not to do it again. I say I promise here while saying promise. I'm doing the action of promising. Another example, I warn you not to do it again. While I'm doing, while I'm saying this utterance, I'm doing the action of warning him not to do it again. So here, using performative verbs, the speaker are doing two things simultaneously. One stating and another one acting. This is the thing. Another example is uh, declare. Say the president has officially declared war against Iran. Yes. While the president declare the war, he's doing the action of declaring it. Now it's interesting to understand that this kind of performative verbs can be explicitly stated by inserting adverb hereby. I hereby declare the war against Iran. Right? This is explicit by inserting hereby. Now there is a typical characteristic of this kind of elocutionary force. Namely, the subject should be the first person singular I. And then the verb should be in present tense form. All right? So this is performative. This kind of utterance does not give information, but show action. And another one is the act of giving information. Namely, the act of using other verbs, I mean, other than performative verbs. The verbs are called constative, constative verbs. The utterances using const constative verbs do not show action, rather gives information. For example, I tried to talk to you yesterday, but you didn't see me. He came late yesterday. My sister will do her PhD degree in the Massachusetts University. Yes? This is information in the level of elocutionary act. Okay? Now, concerning the truth of what is stated, yes? The question concerning the utterance which uses performative verb, is it true, is not relevant. So if I say that the president, president say, the president officially declared war, you just cannot say, is it true? No. I warn you not to do it again. Is it true? No. But this question, of course, can be used for utterances, yes, 
that use connotative verbs. Say, when I say just now, for example, my sister will do her PhD degree in Massachusetts University, you can say, is it true? And the truth of this, of course, can be examined if my sister or if I, as a speaker, tells the truth. So this is it. So again, there are two kinds of action conducted by the speaker in elocutionary level. Alright? Now the next one. We can go ahead to examine the effect of these elocutionary forces or the effect of the speaker stating the utterances on the listener. Right? So, the listener, of course, will undergo effect following what the speaker says. When a speaker says, for example, I warn you not to do it again, the, speak, the listener may abide by what the speaker says, by not going there again, by not doing it again. Or he may not hear it at all by doing it again. All right? So the two possibilities or the two types of effect on the listener do not coincide sometimes. They may go in different direction. If a speaker says to a girl, for example, oh, you are beautiful. The illocutionary act, you are beautiful, as a phrase, of course can give effect to the woman or to the girl. She may feel very happy, she may be amused, and so on. This is illocutionary act. So, we can see from locutionary act, there is an action. In illocutionary act, there is an action, and in a perlocutionary act, there is effect. So all three of these levels of speech acts cannot be separated one from another. And, you know, consciously or inconsciously, you implement these speech acts in your social interaction. All right, now let's go ahead. In order for somebody to succeed in carrying out speech act, he has to comply with conditions that we call felicity condition. What is felicity condition? Felicity condition is the condition that has to be met so that to result in proper and acceptable utterance that will yield in communicative interaction. The first one or the first condition of felicity condition is preparatory condition. Preparatory condition is the condition where the speaker is in authority or is in a position or is entitled to single out an utterance. Okay, let's take a look at the previous example. I officially declare war against Iran. Yes. Somebody declaring this should be the one that has authority to declare the war, namely the president or as the head of the nation. You 
you, of course, are not entitled to do this because you don't have authority to do this. If you say this, your utterance is not true because it violates preparatory condition. And then, who says, I sentence you five years in jail? Can, you, can your wife say this? Can your wife say it? Can your sister say it? Of course not. It should be addressed by a judge in a court he, because he has authority to do that. Right? And then I baptize you in the name of Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Who can say that? It can be stated only by a pastor in a church ceremony yes, devoted to the events of baptizing people. See. Another example, I named this ship Titanic. Can you say that? You can, but you violate the preparatory condition and your utterance is not valid. It should be done by somebody else who has authority to name the ship. The second one, there should be also another felicity condition that we call right circumstances, correct circumstances, or right manner or condition. The declaration of war, of course, is conducted in certain places, in a formal place. It is not done in random places. And the declaration is addressed not to random people, but only to, yes, the people where the president reigns. And then there should be some events leading to this declaration. And the next one, the declaration has never been conducted by anybody else. So the president is the first one to declare the war. This is the right condition or the right manner. And another one, if I say, I will lend you some money. Yes, I'm entitled to say this utterance to the listener. And he is in the position of expecting or borrowing money from me. So this is the right manner. Another example, if you want to welcome somebody, yes, and then you say, please come in. You want to welcome him, right? The manner should be, of course, proper that reinforces, yes, that reinforces your welcoming him. Of course, you show hospitality and then you behave that you are glad. Imagine, for example, if you want to welcome somebody, uh, you know, with uh, a kind of bad manner, yes, you look as if there's something wrong with welcoming him. Yes, it's not the right manner, of course. So the condition of manner here is not meant. All right? So 
it should be like that. And another one, there should be sincerity condition. Sincerity condition is when you speak, you say something, you have to be committed to saying something that you think it is true, that you believe it is true. If you promise somebody, for example, it should be true. You have to be committed, yes, to doing something true. This is sincerity. Say something that tells the sincerity that it will be true, that you believe it will occur. Sincerity condition. In our daily or in our daily social interaction, yes, you consciously or unconsciously practice these conditions. But you know, sometimes you fail to do this. And that is why, you know, a kind of communication gap. Yes? This is a kind of gap that try to bother your communication. But sometimes, you know, you may not abide by this felicity condition. Whenever, for example, you it is not in a you know in a in an actual situation. Maybe you want a joke, you want to say something beyond the truth, the real condition. Yes? And then say for example you welcome somebody while showing an expression of anger. Yes. yes. You do this to somebody who is close to you. Yes. As I said, this kind of expression and the act of welcoming yes, are not compatible one another. They are not compatible one another. Yes. You may tell jokes to your friend because he's your close friend. But it rarely occurs in our daily communication. Before I put an end to my lecture, let me try to sum up what I have stated so far. The first one, speech acts. Speech acts is composed of locutionary act, illocutionary act, and perlocutionary act. And then when you carry out speech act, you have to abide by felicity conditions, namely preparatory condition, manner condition or manner condition, and then sincerity condition. In order for you to understand better about this, you need to refer to other linguists' works such as John Shirley and the other ones. I thank you very much for your attention. And in the next e-learning class, we will talk more about central issues in pragmatics. Be strong, keep calm, and thank you, goodbye.